we have at TV at this point. And this crew, the STS, the members of the Mission STS-86, are just outside their crew quarters uh, in their dining facility. Uh, Wendy Lawrence, mission specialist, is uh, seated next to the rest of her crew members, which include uh, uh, Scott Perizinski, Mike, uh, or Dave Wolf, um, pilot Mike Bloomfield, of course, our commander shown here. Uh, Jim Weatherby is a veteran shuttle flyer. He's, this is his fourth flight that uh, he's getting ready to participate with. And, of course, our um, mission specialist, Dave Wolf, who will be uh, going up but not coming back. He will be staying on Mir for the next four months. A uh, representative from the French Space Agency is Jean-Luc Crétien. He'll be flying uh, on this flight. As well as a representative from the Russian Space Agency, Vladimir Titov. He is a very experienced uh, astronaut, cosmonaut, and he will be uh, one of the two EVA uh, crew members for this flight. And they are all ready to take our picture. Of course, our cameramen who are uh, familiar to the crew members. Uh, again, the exact time of launch will be announced about 90 minutes before liftoff. But our best estimate at this time, uh, based on the uh, location of the uh, Mir space station, uh, launch will occur at about 10.34 and 19 seconds. We, and we do have live TV of the flight crew. The seven members of our flight team are in their crew quarters, uh, making last-minute preparations, uh, being suited for this mission. Uh, Jim Weatherby is is uh, being uh, attended to. He has his uh, helmet on. He, of course, is uh, preparing for his. And his pilot is uh, Mike uh, Bloomfield, and he is preparing for his first shuttle mission. He is a graduate of the U.S. Air Force Academy. A mission specialist, Wendy Lawrence, uh, the only female aboard this flight, making her second trip into space aboard the shuttle. Uh, her first flight was on mission STS-67. Looking at uh, another one of our mission specialists, this uh, looks like uh, Scott Perizinski. The member of the team who will be going up and staying on Mir is uh, mission specialist Dave Wolf, and this will be his second trip on the shuttle. Uh, he'll remain on Mir for the next four months, uh, replacing Mike Fole, who has been on Mir since May. Uh, Wolf is scheduled to be the sixth astronaut to live aboard Mir, and he will officially become a member of the Mir crew after Atlantis and Mir dock uh, on Saturday afternoon. And it's hard to tell who these uh, astronauts are with their helmets on, but that looked like it was uh, Jean-Luc Chrétien, a uh, member of our uh, flight crew. Uh, actually, a, uh, he is a chief of the French uh, astronaut office. Vladimir Titov also is a uh, member of this uh, crew. He will be uh, making his uh, second flight on the shuttle, but this is his fifth flight overall. Uh, he became a cosmonaut in, back in 1976. Also at the launch pad is the final inspection team. Uh, they were formerly known as the ice and debris assessment team, but they are currently working their way uh, around the launch structure. Uh, this is a team of engineers and safety personnel. Uh, they were dispatched by the pad by launch director Jim Harrington to follow the cryogenic tanking operations. This is shuttle launch control. Uh, we've uh, just uh, left our hold at T-minus three hours, and we are counting at T-minus uh, two hours, 58 minutes. And we have live TV of our flight crew as they are on the third floor of the crew quarters making preparations to get on the elevator uh, go down two floors, get on the astronaut van to be driven out to the pad. The seven members of the STS-86 crew being led by uh, Jim Weatherby, uh, followed by pilot Michael Bloomfield, uh, mission specialist Vladimir Titov, Scott Perezinski, Jean-Louis Christian, Wendy Lawrence, and David Wolf.
Also, we have a view of the commander in his uh, commander seat uh, from the inside of the uh, Atlantis. And uh, MS-4 in at this time. All right. Okay, copy that. And it looks like uh, Scott is uh, preparing a note. Uh, I love you, Gail and little Luke. See you back on Earth in 10 days. And of course, that is certainly the schedule for this mission. And he wishes them well. Houston. Dave, I have you loud and clear. How's it going, just two? That's a beautiful night here in Florida, Doc. Looking forward to the ascent with you, this great crew up front. We are, too. And a great crew on the ground watching everything and making sure it goes right. Safety and mission assurance. Safety and mission assurance is go. Copy that. Main flow. Roger, sir. We have no constraints to launch. Copy that. Top flight action. The MMP is go for launch. Copy that. And Atlantis, uh, looks like everything's come together. And uh, we wish you a, a great voyage and a great mission, and we'll see you back here on the 5th. Well, it's been a great flow for Atlantis. Uh, thanks to all the folks who worked on the processing of the vehicle. What do you say we take her to space, Jim? Roger that. NTD, you're clear to launch. I copy. Zaragoza has gone to a forecast broken deck. Your new TAL site will be Maroon. That's site number three. Nominal aim point, nominal speed break. The altimeter there is two niner, niner, niner. Winds are zero five zero at four. Also, Ben Greer is going to be a go forecast. T minus three minutes, 30 seconds, and counting. And final error surface checks of the orbiters. Wing elevons and rudders are being completed. This verifies the orbiter's hydraulic systems are up and operational. Copy that. In Atlantis OTC, close and lock your visors. Initiate O2 flow. Have a good trip. 
Bon Voyage, South Riva, and give our best to the Mir crew. 10, 9, 8, 7. We have a go for main engine. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Booster ignition and liftoff of the Space Shuttle Atlantis, extending America's presence in space while opening new chapters in exploration. Houston now controlling. Houston now controlling. Control. Roll program initiated. Place Atlantis on its heads down track over the Atlantic. Engines at 104 percent, preparing the throttle down to 67 percent for max Q, passing through the period of maximum aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle. Three engines throttling down now. Three engines at 67. Three engines at 67 now, passing through maximum aerodynamic pressure at 58 seconds. Atlantis moving at 1,000 miles per hour now. Altitude 8.8 .8 miles, downrange 5.8 miles. Atlantis, go at throttle up. Go at throttle up and we'll ignore the fuel cell belt to be also. Three engines back at 104%. Now Atlantis moving at 1,600 miles per hour. Atlantis, that is a deucer. Copy and concur. Three good fuel, fuel cells, three good APUs, three engines running at 104%. Atlantis now moving at over 2,000 miles per hour, 18.4 miles in altitude, downrange 16 miles. About 15 seconds away from solid rocket booster separation. Atlantis moving at 2,800 miles per hour. Solid rocket booster separation confirmed. Guidance converging. Performance nominal. Nominal performance. Performance during first stage uh, considered nominal. Now three engines running at 104% as intended. Three good APUs, three good fuel cells. Atlantis now 48 miles downrange. And of course our um, mission specialist Dave Wolf who will be uh, going up but not coming back. He will be staying on Mir for the next four months. Uh, representative from the French Space Agency is Jean-Luc Chrétien. He'll be flying uh, on this flight. As well as our representative from the Russian Space Agency, Vladimir Titov. He is a very experienced uh, astronaut, cosmonaut, and he will be the, STS, the members of the mission STS-86 are just outside their crew quarters uh, in their dining facility. Uh, Wendy Lawrence, mission specialist, is uh, seated next to the rest of her crew members, which include uh, uh, Scott Perezinski, Mike, uh, or Dave Wolf, um, pilot Mike Bloomfield, of course, our commander shown here. Uh, Jim Weatherby is a veteran shuttle flyer. He's, this is his fourth flight that uh, he's getting ready to participate with. have that TV at this point and this crew the one of the two 
EVA uh, crew members for this flight. And they are all ready to take our picture, of course, our cameramen who are uh, familiar to the crew members